So airway management in COVID-19, uh, what am I gonna talk about? I'm gonna talk about how to protect yourself. Airway management and you are one of the team handling the airway, whether you are anesthesia resident or you are emergency resident, ICU, internal medicine, or any physician. And at that spot, you will be handling the airway with your team. So what you're supposed to know at the end of this, you're supposed to know what am I supposed to know information to protect me and my team and the patient? What am I supposed to do stepwise to keep the field and the people working in it safe? What are these steps that can keep, keep everyone safe? So tracheal intubation for the COVID patient, it's a high risk for everyone, for the staff and for the patient, regardless the clinical situation of the patient, how severe is his disease. And of course, as the patient goes into severe sickness, it carries a higher risk for the patient himself. Remember, always, the best skilled guy in the team should handle the airway. Not you guys if you are not trained, not you guys if you are the most junior, it is not time to learn. It's actually a time to do it fast. We need to focus and we need to do it to the point and we need to aim for a successful incubation from the first attempt and decrease the time handling the patient airway because of the risk that carries. No rush, but we'll try actually to do it as fast as possible. You should anticipate the difficult airway. I'm not gonna actually spend much time in how to assess this difficult airway, but I want to refresh you about the Malimbeti score, the classes of the Malimbetis, and that can tell you an idea about the uh, airway, whether it's a difficult or an easy access airway. Malimbeti score can give you just an idea, but it's not very sensitive test to be done. Remember always the other uh, predictive values for uh, difficult airway. Uh, protruding teeth, limited mouth opening, uh, short neck, uh, obesity, all these can actually give you a hard time to intubate your patient. Uh, airway assessment has to be done uh, in details and it has to be done carefully because you don't want to uh, enter the room and end up with a difficult airway in an area you don't have much room to move. Handling the airway, I want you to take it into three steps, before, during, and after the procedure. Things to be done, and you have to remember them all, uh, before you enter to the room with the patient. And things to remember uh, during the procedure and uh, during the uh, interaction inside the room with the patient. And things to be done or to be, to be remembered after you finish before starting the procedure. Hand hygiene is must. And remember, hand hygiene is proving to reduce the risk of transmission for the droplet infection, and it has to be done carefully. Full uh, PPE uh, must be uh, worn. PPE has been proven to be very, very effective, and uh, it has to be worn uh, carefully. Uh, face cover. Uh, eye covers, uh, consider even uh, double gloving, uh, head cover, uh, whatever the hospital you work in provides, and you must be well protected before you even enter to the patient's room. Always 
always we advise to minimize the number of people inside the room. Uh, three people are maximum or the best number. One will perform the intubation and one is the assistant and will assist him for performing the intubation. And the third guy will be preparing and handling the medication. Remember, intubation in a negative pressure room is the best if possible. Uh, rather than intubating the room in an open area and spreading the infection. Uh, still, we are actually before we enter to the uh, patient's room. Uh, try to make a clear plan what you are going to use. Uh, what is your plan A? What's your plan B? And this plan has to be actually discussed with the whole team. Everyone should know uh, what are we going to do inside the room. And uh, that makes it easier for communication inside the room. So everyone would know what would be the next step. Formulate a clear plan before you guys go inside the room. Any preparation for the medication and the equipment, anything, you can prepare it outside the room, do it outside the room. Anything that can be done before you go to the room, preparing the airway, mixing medication, getting these medications ready, make them before you go inside the room. That makes actually the contamination less and time, it saves time. Airway assessment, if not done before you go inside the room, and if the patient was not examined or seen somewhere else in an emergency or on the floor, meticulous airway assessment has to be done. And try to get the uh, disposable uh, equipment. If you have a disposable laryngoscope, that would be a good choice. If not, just use the equipment that you have, but prepare those equipment uh, that you are going to use uh, during your procedure, intubation procedure. Uh, use a closed suction system to minimize the uh, droplet uh, spread around the room. Once we agree, what is the uh, plan? And we specify the rule for everyone. We uh, determined who is uh, intubators and who is uh, the assistant, who's going to prepare the medication. Uh, once we put plan A, once we agreed for plan uh, B, and once we agree how we're gonna talk and communicate inside the room, all the medication being prepared outside and all the uh, equipment and the instruments ready, uh, we're gonna go and start what are the steps we're supposed to follow during the procedure. So clear rules for the three of us and the closed loop communication. Step one, done, drug given, size ready, and a close, uh, sorry, closed loop communication, uh, a clear communication between uh, the team inside the uh, room. Uh, the airway plan, uh, if we agreed, for example, for a rapid sequence induction, uh, a clear communication about the plan, like sucks given, fentanyl given, muscle relaxant given, uh, the sedation was given, whether it's a ketamine or it's a propofol. So uh, a clear communication about the steps uh, from the three uh, people uh, inside the room. Uh, all the team inside the room should pay attention, a close uh, monitoring for any possible chance of contamination and uh, try to avoid it. Uh, during the procedure, remember, as we said, you might be in this team, but you might not be the one putting the tube. If you are a senior resident and you don't have any experience with airway. You are not the one who's supposed to touch the airway. Uh, a, a junior resident to you with an experience to, with airway handling could be the best guy to handle the airway. Remember, the target is to put the tube from the first attempt or at least as soon as possible. Uh, why we need actually uh, two guys inside the room that even will help in having two uh, people uh, securing the airway with the uh, double C, double E 
uh, mask fitting uh, so to seal or to make sure the uh, area is actually sealed and prevent a further droplet spread in the area. Remember, before you put the tube, ensure that the patient is fully paralyzed uh, and you don't start the uh, positive pressure ventilation until you inflate the cuff. Why? To avoid cuffing on the tube and to avoid uh, a spread of the droplet from the airway uh, when you start the uh, positive pressure ventilation uh, before you secure the airway. Always push the balloon one or two centimeter below the vocal cord and inflate it. Uh, we always uh, recommend a rapid sequence induction with the pre-calculated doses, uh, cricoid pressure uh, to uh, minimize the time for the incubation and to avoid a positive mask ventilation uh, during the uh, intubation of a COVID patient. Do not attempt positive mask ventilation unless you had to. And try to avoid the high oxygen or the high gas flow equipment like the uh, high flow uh, nasal cannula or the non-invasive uh, mechanical ventilation uh, devices. After we finished the procedure, everyone did his exact rule and the uh, tube was secured. Uh, patient is a stable hemodynamic. We need to remember a few steps to maintain everyone's safety and uh, stay away from the contamination. Do not disconnect the tube. Avoid any unnecessarily circuit uh, disconnection. If there is a disconnection need to be done, again, put your own PPEs completely and go inside the room. Uh, the the uh, uh, PPEs uh, should be uh, should be adhered strictly, and putting them on and offing uh, strictly with uh, exact steps. You should not actually miss any step of them to avoid uh, any mistake that can cause uh, contamination for the uh, area or for yourself. Uh, definitely, uh, hand hygiene. Remember. Debriefing for the team when you are done. If you have any difficult airway procedure that was done and it should be hand or handed to the team uh, to the night shift when you hand over the case to the hand shift. Uh, so that will make a clear plan for the night team uh, if they need to, for example, reincubate the patient, readjust airway. They need exactly to know what was the successful plan that you have used and to minimize the trials and do uh, go and do it straightforward. Uh, finally, after leaving the room, ensure your doffing of the PPE is meticulous. Make sure after a great job or a good job, you don't just go and uh, take off your uh, PPEs uh, in a wrong way and you end up contaminating yourself or contaminating the area uh, outside the room or even inside the room um, unnecessarily. I hope guys you uh, leave with a take home message. If you are not the most senior, do not uh, handle the airway alone. Uh, if the patient is COVID positive or COVID suspect, he carries a high risk for you, for the staff and for the patient himself. Remember, the most senior guy should actually handle the airway to minimize the exposure and to minimize the time needed for intubation. Uh, PPE is a must. PPE can protect you and protect the environment around you. And communication is a key uh, element in intubating the patient. Communication with the team, communication with the uh, staff uh, in your shift and the uh, briefing or debriefing to the next shift when you hand over the case to them.